afternoon. Johanna Miller, Energy and Climate Program Director at the Vermont Natural Resources Council. We're here with our Climate Dispatch, and I am glad to have Representative Laura Sebelia, Vice Chair of House Energy and Technology, here with us today. Um, and we're going to give you a passed out of Representative Sebelia's committee earlier this week on a 7-2 vote. Um, which is really exciting news. You've been hearing us talking about this important bill um, for many weeks now, um, turning our climate pollution reduction goals into requirements and setting a path towards progress in a way that reduces our emissions, in a way that works for Vermont and Vermonters, and really importantly, um, prioritizes equity and harnesses um, the strengths of our working lands, our farms and our forests, and sets our communities up for resiliency. And that component of the bill is really crucial to us and it's a key focus of Representative Sebelia and she's here to give us a quick update about that important provision and and where we can um, what we can hope for if this bill becomes law. Yeah. Thanks Joey. Uh, this is really the most important aspect for me in terms of this bill um, representing rural areas in the state of Vermont I'm keenly aware of um, their challenges right now with climate change. Um, we see more frequent storms, we see more frequent interruptions in utilities, both electric phone, um, we see uh, problems uh, emerging with that for our transportation systems um, and our folks being isolated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was actually in uh, Wilmington uh, during Tropical Storm Irene and so that is really vivid for me. Um, and seeing this increasing um, amount of storms and really feeling the increasing amount of risk for, mm -hmm. in particular, rural Vermont um, was what led me to really want to work on this bill. Um, I remember last year saying to Representative Briglin, we really need a plan if this is what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And the amount of work um, that he has spent working with, um, like yourself and others um, through the fall and summer, um, pulling together that plan, you know, we've been talking about this uh, throughout that time and uh, I'm really happy with what's happened here. Um, for me, a key piece of um, being a lead sponsor on this bill, which I am and I'm proud to be, um, was the inclusion of really uh, looking specifically at rural resiliency. And I think it's very important for our government to have an understanding from um, the rural areas of our state, if possible, Mm -hmm. um, of, of how they themselves are assessing their risk, how they themselves are assessing um, their access to tools that can help them mitigate that risk, mm -hmm. uh, and how uh, they're able to, um, how, what they can communicate to us about um, the capacity that they feel that they have to deal with this issue. And Representative Sebelia, um, as, as crafted right now, the bill creates three subcommittees, one or four. Um, four. Oh, that's right. Yes. And one, can you can you describe that, especially the sure. ones? Okay. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, and I, I may have to refer to the bill just to make sure I no get problem. the names correct, uh, mm -hmm. but we do have the Rural Resilience and Adaptation Subcommittee, which was key for me for getting into the bill. Um, we also have a Cross-Sector Mitigation Committee um, looking to make sure that we're, um, that uh, our strategies and programs um, uh, are looking across sectors to make sure we're getting the greatest amount of success. Uh, we have the Just Transitions Subcommittee, making sure that there is equity um, in this transition. And then uh, we added, uh, the committee added uh, an Agricultural and Ecosystems Subcommittee, looking to make sure that we are leveraging um, the assets um, from our rural landscape. Um, they're able to sequester and play a very important role in um, emissions well, that and resiliency. Absolutely. That's crucial. So. Yeah. As you've heard from Representative Sebelia, there's been a tremendous amount of work. She's put in a tremendous amount of work and of, around this critical component about making sure that our communities, all communities, rural, more vulnerable communities are adapting to the changing climate, um, that we're doing our part on climate. That's what this bill is all about. It creates a climate council, um, some working subcommittees to focus on both the mitigation and the adaptation and resilience component of it. Again, it's a strong bill um, vote on the House Energy and Technology Committee. The House Appropriations is looking um, at um, raising the revenue needed to, to add capacity to the Agency of Natural Resources in particular. And it's our expectation, um, tell me if I'm wrong, Representative, that this bill will go to the full House floor for a vote um, sometime next week. 
Um, so that's going to be crucial. They've done a tremendous amount of work on this bill. I um, believe that it reflects the important focus that we need to take when we're thinking about climate, prioritizing equity um, and adaptation and resilience and mitigation. So really crucial. It is our hope and we're going to be doing the work to make sure that Representative Sibeli and others who have um, championed um, this effort are getting a strong vote on the House floor so that ultimately it makes its way to the Senate and there's strong and swift action there and then onwards to the governor's desk. So there's a lot of solidarity around achieving our climate goals in a way that works for all Vermonters and this is a really important step forward. So absolutely. unless there's anything else, I just want to encourage you to call your representatives um, and ask and urge them for their support of H688, uh, the Vermont Global Warming Solutions Act, which is a sort of full, um, you know, focused bill um, focusing on climate mitigation, resiliency, and adaptation in the way that should work for all Vermonters. We're going to be working hard to do it. We're going to need your help. Please call your representatives at some point over the weekend or soon and stay tuned as we keep you apprised of this really important bill. And I just want to say thank you again for all you do. And we're going to look forward ideally to giving you great um, news next Friday um, in the House. I hope votes yeah. to move this important bill forward. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Onward.